Oh, right, all right, all right. We've got ourselves a big semi-final here for the DreamHack Masters Atlanta, the Finnish Phenom, the Beast. And the last European standing in this tournament as Hiro and Maru face on the other side of the semis, it's Serral. Playing for NC Sports, that Finnish team that he's been with for years now. Been supporting him and he's been, of course, repping their name as a world champion and the reigning world champion very, very well. Two-time world champion, Serral. His opponent in the bottom left side, a player who honestly finds himself in one of the very few semi-finals he's ever been in. He's always been one of the best in terms of practice partner level. Of, oh, he's got so much potential, but he just does not seal the deal. He flounders at the finish line, line so many times. And that is why so many people are, of course, doubting him going into the semi-finals. We've got Bunny in the left side of this map. <clears throat> I believe he's still repping Team Envy. People in Twitch chat watching live can help clarify that one for me. <laughs> Realize, I'm pretty sure he was. Still repping Team Envy. I think he's still with them, which is good to see. Uh, Bunny, in the last year, everyone that's won a GSL has basically thanked him and said, Bunny was my main practice partner for my first Terran matchups. Anyone who's beaten Maru, like Hero, I believe, when he beat Maru in GSL said, oh, you know, it's all thanks to Bunny practicing like hundreds and hundreds of games with me. He was such a good practice partner and he actually plays you know, so well that it really prepares you very well for tournaments. So Bunny's been getting a lot of props for a while, but uh, very rarely, I don't know if he's ever been in a big grand finals. I don't think he has up to this point. And uh, playing up against Serral here is of course a match where many people are like, eh, they're doubting him. They're thinking Serral's just so solid in this matchup. But keep in mind, Serral's so defensive. He lets Terran players kind of take a head start. Now that drone could have actually blocked that Reaper there. Oh, almost loses it. Bunny, though, getting a bit horny with this Reaper. This is a true North American Virgin Reaper. And North America... Oh, great grenade! Oh my god, is he actually going to get out of here? No way. No way. That queen wants to cut him off. Oh, oh, he's going to go back. Go back to the right. Oh my god. He's regening. He's injected the combat drugs. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh god, the Link's going to hit. Okay, the other queen's coming down, but he barely gets out. I can't believe it. Oh my god, that was actually brilliant. Serral's going to be a little annoyed at that. Damn, dude. Damn, damn, damn to damn. Third hatchery in the top side as well. Queen moving to the left. Creep Tumor does spread down there. Reaper gets pushed on back. Link Speed is on the way. Serral here just focusing on a very solid mineral focused opening. He's got two queens out. Make it three. Fourth queen on the way. He's holding that drone key down very hard. He's also got great overlord positioning, does Serral. You can see he's got these overlords really far forward to see if any Hellions arrive. And one overlord hidden on the left, which he's going to send into Scout right about now. Behind this, Bunny has gone for a third command center nice and early, so he's not rushed out his Hellions. And even the ones he has, he's keeping at home to block any Ling Scouts. And it looks like it's going to be a cloaked Banshee Hellion. So a very standard and relatively safe way of playing. A lot of players like to cut corners against Serral and skip the Banshees entirely and go straight up to just, you know, 2-1-1 one, one off the three command center. But I think the Banshees, as long as you don't throw them away, they're always going to give you value in the long run. Marine comes down. And of course, seeing that there's no second gas in the main already, you know there's a third command center, but Serral will now confirm that fact. And no cloak even getting faked here for Bunny. He could start it when he kills the Overlord, but it would finish so late in this game that I don't think it'd really be worth it. So far, a Sporkroller trick and a single Zergling, all that's died this game. Oh my god, does he actually get out of there? It'd be so funny if this Overlord survived. Command center lifts after dropping a mule there in the main. Hellions. Oh, one of the Hellions goes down. I mean, he gets a creep tumor, but Queens are going to be very quick to replenish that. Up to the lair now, starting at 4 minutes 40. Second gas going down in the main, and a spore crawler as well. Cloak does end up starting, so he decides to go for the delayed Cloak does Bunny. Interesting. Hoping maybe that several skips out on the spores, and the Banshees can run in and surprise him with a bunch of damage. Hellion Reaper there is going to start to push that Queen back, and wants to line up those creep tumors. Well, he gets two of them, leaves the third one, a little bit of a mistake there. But the Hellions and the Reapers not taking too much damage is probably more important right now. Only 11 Zerglings out, but 8 Queens with a ninth one building. And it looks like another Creep Tumor goes down, but the Hellions really not finding too much of their, their damage or, or opening up any avenues. On the other hand, Bunny does have a third command center, and he's now going to float his Banshees out on the map. Where are they both? Let's take a look at that. So we've got both Banshees joining up. As I said, he really wants to surprise Serral with this. So he doesn't want to get spotted by like this Zergling or anything like that. Serral does see the third base is landed. He hasn't confirmed what the follow-up is just yet, but he can assume it's probably Bio. Bunny is, of course, a very Bio-centric player. 
Not many players want to play mech against Serral because he's so methodical at picking it apart. Double Evo Chamber is on the way. That's going to be double upgrade starting about the six minute mark. Pretty solid. Obviously an upgrade lead for Bunny, but he hasn't done any damage. And Serral at 68 workers going to 71. He's going to have a very large economy at his disposal. There we go. The cloak surprise comes on in. There's only one overseer and it's on the other side of the map. It's over on the, the top left. Uh, I think it was going to go for a scout. But now he's pulled it home in panic. Banshees get three drones. Bit of mining time. And they will now just fall on back. Hellion Reaper comes forward. Clears some creep. SCVs accidentally got pulled with that. So he fixes that up. Bunny dances and gets a few more workers. And remember, Serral does not play as greedy as Rayner. But because he's been given so much room to breathe, really, not no Hellion dives, nothing like that, he's actually going up above 80 workers already. So Serral is getting a monstrous economy, and Buddy's kind of letting him do it. He's like, ah, build a fourth base nice and early, expect a second factory to go down out here or here very soon. The reason for that is, of course, you need to get up a reactor pumping out Widow Mines to keep going. Banshee's up to nine worker kills in total. Gonna come back in and try and fight that queen. They do a lot more damage than her, but she can pull back behind the safety of the spore and she does push them away. I like the factory being in the natural. A lot of players build it in the third and a reactor takes a long time to build. So they might keep blowing your reactor up with banelings and that's a real big problem. So I like that he protects this very important uh, tech structure back here. And that's gonna allow him to keep pumping those units out as he goes up into the widow mines. Serral is on 80 workers. A lot of players would try to go to 90, they take a fifth base, rush upwards. Serral's not bothering with any of that. He's got the Hydra Den. I expect those double Hydra upgrades to queue up in a moment's time. And there we go. He's going to go for mass Hydra Link Bane. And this is one of the best ways to, to smash a Terran on this map. It's hard to kill the fourth, but when they take the fifth base onwards, you can just blow them up. Hydra's very good versus Hellbats, very good versus Widow Mines as they outrange them. And here comes the first Marine Hellbat pressure. Here we go, Banelings looking for the big connects, getting up into the juicy center, saves 16 of the Marines, but otherwise his army gets wiped, not enough medevacs for healing there, and I mean, this is the problem with this push, you don't mind losing the Hellbats so much, but also losing uh, a lot of the Marines that couldn't fit inside the medevacs makes it kind of costly. Bunny is going to nip the front of this creep off on the right side of the map, you can see Serral's expanding to the top left right now. And an infestation pit is on the way. 2-2 upgrades have started for both sides. Still maintaining a 30-second upgrade lead on that is Bunny. And he goes forward, sees the lings, the spores. Queen's down here as well. He's going to fall back to the watchtower for now. Planetary's going up on the fourth base. Bunny really just looking to slowly and calmly establish this setup. Cloaking his banshees and running north with those. Um, how many kills are they up to? Seven and three, respectively. Hive starts up, three more barracks going down, so he's going to add a lot of Marauders in the mix as well. No Ghost Academy just yet, you don't really need that. When you're up against Hydrilling Bane, it's just about having the numbers more than anything. Banshee's threatening the top left, picking off whatever they can. They will take out a Hydra if they can. Double Drop dives in the right side, no backup Spore. Having a Spore Crawler on that right side stops this sort of maneuver because he doesn't have it. That gets right on in there. Widow Mine's firing, taking out some Lings, some Banes. Banshee goes down. Other one is going to be forced on back. Double drop goes in the back of the natural, but it's got plenty of units on top of it. And once he gets the Vipers out, of course, Serral can shut that down. Serral's on 88 workers. He's got complete control. We could criticize his creep spread a little bit as it's slowed down in the middle of this map, but he's controlling the, the pressure of Bunny with ease. And I really feel like when Bunny moves out to take that fifth base, that is the natural point where players like to go and do big damage in this matchup. Oh, Widow Mine, Burrow, Unburrow, can it fire in time? No, it can. Oh, it does! It dies and then it fires. Widow Mine over there gets four drones. Nice attempt to do some harassment here. And I like creating some more Widow Mine fields in the middle of the map as well. The double drop in the back of the natural could probably be forgotten about. I mean, there's so many pressures coming in from multiple angles for Bunny that several might forget about that. And that could do a lot of workers worth of damage. Marine Marauder here, start a stepping back. Watch out for the Widow Mine. Ooh, we got a pretty big shot there. 12 Zerglings go down. Bunny's units lost tab looking all right here. Double drop does come indeed in towards the main base. Look at that reaction by Serral, though. Immediately pulls drones away. Unfortunately, a bunch of them pop out into the firepower of those Marines. 
And there we go. Immediately just picks up and pulls on back. Vipers are on the way, though, so only a matter of time. On the other hand, Bunny cancelling the sixth base in the bottom as well. And he's going to try and bait the Link Bait into this. Ooh, some good Widow Mine hits. Saves most of the bio and does get out of there with that. Still has some Metavax in the back of the base, not to mention clearing the creep in the bottom right. Bunny is doing a masterclass of control with small tactical squads. He's all over the map. We've got more command centers and he's going to float out. He's going to try and take that fifth base behind this pressure and get a planetary up on it. Unfortunately for him, Serral has already borrowed a Zergling on that base. More drops coming in the back of the natural. Meanwhile, the drop in the bottom does get caught by the Hydras, but he saves it. Great reaction by Bunny. Marines in the back of the natural are trading very well versus these Zerglings. Ooh, does lose one of the Metavax. And of course, the Vipers being out means that could be uh, going down soon as well. Double drop on the right side. Could once again scoot on by. But that fifth base getting blocked. Not going to be able to go down. In the top left, big bio mine army actually has the numbers to shove in there. There's only a few banelings, but banelings on creep are very scary. And especially once lurkers come out, that's really when he's going to have a hard time pushing. But that's a while away. Lurker then is not finished yet. Adrenal glands, plus three carry plays, plus one range on the way. The banelings come forward. The medevacs have to pick up and get on out of there. But meanwhile, he's dropping over on the right side as well. Queen's coming in as well as parasitic bomb and the vipers to finish that bad boy off. And look at that. The queens surrounding. The I mean, they have no damage. Plus two armor, marines and marauders versus no attack damage uh, queens. They do so little, but finally, some things do trickle in. Big attack on the top left. Serral leaves himself undefended. I think he keeps expecting Bunny to pull home to defend. But this is the problem. If you're a purely defensive player like Serral is, then you simply aren't going to be able to, to, to put him back on the defense. You need to go over there and actually do some aggression. We saw he ran some Zerglings in and lost them. But he's not able to bust through. On the other hand, Bunny has only now got this fifth base about to land and turn into a planetary. And that is a big problem for him. Marine Marauder running down the right side. Widow Mine's firing on those Zerglings. The Marines and the Marauders are going to try and take out that hatchery. They do so. Some of the units do get taken out, but some saved. Jump into the main base. Really trying to get the harassment going with the movement is Bunny. He's trading okay, but i got to say it's pretty close to even. We're used to Zerg versus Terran being pretty bad. Units lost have for the Zerg in this game. Even though he is denying the hatcheries, Bunny is not trading that well army to army. It's the hatchery deniers that are massive though. Right now, Serral cannot get past four bases. His fifth and sixth base keep getting denied. Meanwhile, Bunny's got his own base, finally erecting into a planetary. Very slow to get that erection up, though. And he really needs to spread his units out. Now, it's key with Widow Mines to have your bio up in front of the Widow Mines so that you can get good hits. If you leave your Widow Mines exposed, then they aren't going to fire off very well. Oh my god, that's a lot of Widow Mines! Oh my god, a fair bit of friendly fire goes down, though. I think the Widow Mines maybe were a bit too clumped up. This base does get evicted from this base. A few more Widow Mines are, are going to be able to try and fire there, but they're not really getting the big hits because they're no longer supported by the bio. So much bio going down here, and what a lovely engagement by Cerro's Hydrilling Bane up against the bio mine. Here we go, Marine Marauder moving down that right side. Still just changelings in the top left. It looks like Bunny's lost all of those drops and pressures that were keeping Serral pinned back. He needs this expansion up and he needs it now. He's adding ghosts. Ghosts are the last thing he needs right now against this army. They're very good against Ultras. They're very good against Infestors. I mean, they're not bad versus the Vipers, so having a couple is pretty good. But uh, you don't really need them. Vipers don't have a lot of utility versus a bio mine army. I do think he might need to start building siege tanks, though, just to add a little something, some ranged firepower. Uh... These Widow Mines, remember what I said? You can't have them out on their own, or Serral can just easily spread a few Zerglings to take those. Look at this. Here we go. Parasitic Bombs. Giant push comes forward. He dodges the EMP, does Serral. Widow Mines getting some decent hits, but not the big fat juicies that he really wants. Bion Banelings wash up on the Marine Marauder, and that was a good defense there by Bunny. Very nicely done. Really beautiful defense by him. He's going to think about counter pushing, but his army's very wounded. This is a dangerous move. There's a few Banelings and a lot of Zerglings and Hydras here. More Banelings coming in from the left. Buddy, get out of there! Oh my god, the Widow Mines try to fire! He does have to pick up and get out, but that means his Widow Mines are stuck in no man's land. He's going to try and boost back south behind the planetary and defend that one. He will be able to do so. Serral, where are his Overseers right now? He's got three Overseers. He's got one with his army, but he's not cleaning up those Widow Mines right now. He really should be taking advantage of this. But look at that. Bunny's going to start pulling them back. 
and he might be able to just keep this push going on this right side. Fifth base is fully established, remember, and he's up to, of course, a total of six orbitals behind this, so there's a lot of money behind this for Bunny. Bunny, he needs a chance to remax. Serral's keeping him on the ropes, but Serral doesn't have a big bank to work with either. Serral's only on 83 workers. He's now making nine lurkers. Bunny's going to start to push forward on this right side. I really feel like Serral had the er edge earlier in this game. But Bunny denying the 5th and 6th base so many times has gotten him into a pretty okay position. He's got to withstand this wave though. Oh my god, a fungal! A burrow infestor popped up from behind. Parasitic bomb all over the Metavax. And a massive Baneling Lurker. A huge commitment. The Banelings find the mineral line. The planetary goes down. The Lurkers are just a little bit too much there. And you can see Bunny just didn't quite have the numbers to withstand that push. It was a massive investment. Several needed that fight to go well. But it went very well, denying that fifth base, the weak point of the Terran on this map, and it's gone excellently. The Finnish player now has map dominance. He's got fifth base. He's got a sixth base. He's got a seventh base. Hasn't transferred workers to it yet, but that will happen with time. You can see he's keeping his mineral saturation very nice and balanced across these. Not oversaturated anywhere, and he keeps on sending these infestors forward. Look at that. Little burrow boys looking for those sneaky fungus from underground. Going to chuck that big green goop that stops you from microing. Widowmine gets a decent hit. You can see the second one. Whenever those Widowmines are out on their own, they're not able to do too much. Hellbats can be very effective, especially once you get Blue Flame in plus three. But Bunny is nowhere near that point. He is on survival mode or in survival mode right now. He's got a Biomine army on the left side. I do think Biomine performs very well when you're attacking in multiple areas because it becomes hard for the Zerg to, to dodge the Widowmines. That Widowmine gets a pretty good hit. That Hatchery is going to go down as well. He's going to pick up. Pull to the left corner, but oh no! He loses a full Medivac and another full Medivac. This is a disaster for Bunny. I thought this was a great move because Serral's such a defensive player. He didn't take advantage of the fact that he could have just ran in and killed this base. When he saw that drop up there, he could have just said, okay, I'll give up a base or two, but I'll kill your important base and win the game. Serral doesn't do that. Serral's a defensive guy. He likes to fight only after defending at his bases at home. And that's something which, of course, he, he was inclined to do there. Unfortunately, Bunny overcommitted, lost two full medevacs, making it an awesomely positive trade for Serral. Oh my god, oh my god. Do, 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 do. Serral! Serral! Oh my god, Serral almost just had a, a, a bit of a brain fart there. Tried to, he finally noticed where that was. Almost ran all of his lurkers and stood his drones in it. Luckily pulls away at the last second and avoids disaster. Bunny, though, is still just struggling to remax, struggling to survive. The bio goes forward. He doesn't have a lot of firepower beyond the Widow Mines. He needs some big juicies. He does get a few decent hits on that, and this might be a bit of a weird angle for Serral to push, but what is there to deal with the Lurkers? There is a Siege tank. The Liberators might need to shuffle forward and try to Siege on that. One of the Lurkers goes down. They're going to shove forward a little bit. These Libs coming up. One Siege Tank just takes way too long to clear through all of these Lurkers and... Oh no! Oh no, he's trapped! He quickly picks up and saves some of those units, but the Banelings got some good hits before that happened. Hydra's getting caught out on the front. They get absolutely minced. But I think Serral can afford these trades and Bunny cannot. Every time he gets his mining interrupted here, it's his lifeline. It's all he's got left, man. His income is down at 1,200 minerals a minute versus 3,400 minerals a minute. Serral can keep these trades going all day. It doesn't need to be directly cost efficient because in the long run, it's just going to be fantastic for him. He's still got a burrowed boy in the back door. Nothing like a sneaky boy trying to tentacle you in the back door. But that's how he likes to do it. Widowmine does go down. Bunny gets another hatchery snipe, but another full medevac flies in. Ah, oh, he's lost control of this game. Bunny, he's only down 35 supply. He, oh, looks like an investor walked into turret range. Did get blown up there. The sneaky boy. Uh, doesn't actually have the tentacle upgrade either, the, the neural parasite upgrade, so we can't use that. Ooh, nice drop in the top left. I, I feel like if Bunny just keeps on doing small tactical drops, but most importantly preserving them, not throwing them away, he could get this base up, this fifth, and take a perfect defensive fight and be back in the game. Serral doesn't have a big bank. I keep pointing it out because he, he's not at 80 workers or anything, but oh, smart angle change from Serral. Lingbane Hydra comes in the left. It's a mostly unsupported planetary fortress. Widowmine gets a good hit, but man, they still manage to connect with some ghosts. Gets the planetary and pulls back. I think that's a wise pullback because he's got units coming in from every side. Snipes landing. That wastes a lot of energy cloaking those ghosts. And now you can rotate back to the right, or you can come in here once you remax with some more units. And the planetary has been shifted out of there. So you've got another angle that's open. Bottom right base is fully saturated. Serral's got this base here as well with the rich gas mining. 
You can see he's struggling a little bit as these bases start mining out and these corners are so hard to hold. Normally I'd say trying to defend both corners is a fool's errand and basically you give the Terran two easy attack angles to kill drones, hatcheries for free, get good trades. But Serral, I don't know, I feel like he's done a good job so far of splitting his units up, defending multiple areas. Here we go, another big attack on the left. The Widow Mines, oh, getting some pretty good juicy hits there. The Siege Tank goes down nonetheless. The double drop that was meant to be heading to the top left gets F2'd home. Ah, oh, the folly of F2. It's so good when you're in control of the game, the Select All Army key. But when you get put on the back foot like this, you, you, you're accidentally kind of disrupting your previous orders. You end up in what we call a redundant APM cycle where you're constantly correcting, fixing, and, and, and redoing your previous orders. So that, you know, you're not just saying, go drop the top left. You're going, drop the top left. Then you select all army and panic micro. Then you realize, oh crap, I pulled that drop back. You go tell them to drop again. And you get stuck in this kind of big APM trap, which takes away a lot of your situational awareness. Because rather than thinking about what's happening in the game and your position, you're much more focused on just fixing little errors. And I've got to be real careful with that. Everyone does it to a certain extent. But when you're on the back foot in Zerg vs. Terran, it happens more than ever with the other races usually. Nice drone evacuation here from Serral. He's got some lurkers and a spore. He's going to try and attack the left side. He says, okay, if you want to shove in there, I'll just hit this left. I'd like to see Bunny punish with a drop, but there is some Lingbane Hydra stationed at that base. Hatchery Snipe does go down. Serral does not want to overcommit. He wants to do what Serral does, and that is play a very patient game. Doesn't want to force the issue. Plus three range attack has been upgraded for his Lurkers and his Hydras as well. That means those Lurkers do an insane amount of damage. 26 versus Light, 39 versus Armored. Bunny will head across with a Widow Mine drop on that right side. I like Serral's awareness. He's still got the double, the double drop threatening on the left, but he's waiting for it. And look at that. Bunny tells it to come in and unload in a position which he assumes will be unguarded. And Serral smacks it down preemptively. Meanwhile, busting the right side. Big abducts coming in, and whenever you abduct a liberator, it unseiges it. It pulls it out of siege mode, and he gets this base evicted. Seven SCVs go down, and he pulls back, and he makes more units. Serral says, yep, just wait for me to wake make more lings, more banes. I don't want to throw away these expensive hydras and vipers. He's going to retake the bottom base. The lurkers can also shuffle in for a bit of a flank. If he gets this army retreating onto this ramp, and these lurkers run in and flank behind it, he could get the massive splashy. Already gets a few Marines and Marauders there. Could also siege this Mineral Line from the high ground with Lurkers. Ghosts are going to cloak, run forward, and absolutely annihilate those bad boys. But you've got to be careful with your energy management. And actually, keeps the Lurker alive. Ling's running on the left, but Liberators will defend that one. One Lurker does survive. Here we go! Massive Blinded Cloud for Serral. Hits three tanks of ducks. One of the Liberators, the Banelings, going after the Ghosts. A beautiful spready from Bunny. The SCVs quickly evacuate from downtown Mineral Line. The Planetary kicks in, and Bunny with a sick defense there. Dude, if he actually had a decent, similar economy in this game and wasn't so far behind for so long, I actually think that could be a game-winning fight. But the income, look at that, guys. Ten minutes of several domination in the income and that is hard to recover from bunny though he's going to strike forward he's going to try and deny this base serral is not willing to give this base up just yet but i don't know man he might have to parasitic bombs going out on the medivacs emp lands on the vipers widow mines getting some decent splashies but the lings are quick to break the front line of tanks the medivacs are so darn low right now the marauders the ghosts trying to defend banelings getting in the mineral line they're going to get a bunch of scvs and damaging the ghosts but my god this is a costly trade for serral remember that serral was pretty much neck and neck in the units lost for most of this game. He's now falling to close to 10,000 resources lost behind. 8,000 right now, but there's more damage that's about to happen. Oh, he evacuates his drones into a Nidus Worm. Oh, that's so good. He's actually popping a Nidus in the top left, so he's going to transfer workers to safe locations. These little details, man. The Burrowed Infestors looking at ambush. The Nidus Worms used to evacuate drones, where, of course, Burrow doesn't work because they'll just scan them down. This is so clever. He can just rally them straight onto that base if he wants to. He's putting a new Nidus in the bottom right as that base is still actually alive. And Serral's Remax, Bunny, he's working with Dregs. And right now, that is a high-value Zerg army coming in, abducting one of the Liberators. EMP lands on the other one. The Banelings say, boom, baby! And the Planetary gets taken out. Massling Bane continuing forwards. There is just too much Zerg on the dance floor right now. And they are doing the stompy, stompy FU Terran dance. It's very popular on TikTok. It might not be Bunny's favorite, though, to start off this series. As, uh, yeah, Serral's absolutely just mauling him right now. 
He's, he's smashing him from one side of the map to the other. I think Bunny did a really good job with his drops earlier in this game, but Serral so patient, so methodical with the way he breaks in against players like this. Even Fungal's continuing to come in from behind, and look how weak all these medevacs are. A lot of people wonder why people use parasitic bombs, but it's a slow, methodical, just wearing down those medevacs. It gives you a lot of value as the Zerg player. Those Vipers, such a good recyclable resource. The Lingbane Lurker Hydra coming in. Oh no, the command center goes down. And that means Bunny is knocked off all mining on the map, completely annihilated. Serral has both corners and he takes map one. <laughs> all right, guys, let's go game two. We've got Serral in the top right. Very nice game one for him. He's going to open up Spawning Pool first. Good way to, uh, of course, counteract the fact that an early Reaper is a pain to deal with on this map. Keep it pinned back with some early Zerglings. Uh, Bunny in the bottom left, though. Had a very good, uh, you know, I think he had a pretty good macro opening. The delayed Cloak Banshees killed nine drones in total. And they did stay reasonably busy. Um, Serral's not much of a backstab guy. So I think the Banshees actually get more value for someone like Rayner, who wants to be Ling Bane backstabbing you all game long. Whereas someone like Serral just sits in his corner and kind of waits for you to misstep and then pounces. Like, it's... it's Serral is only brutal at killing his opponent after they they miss... You know, they, they, they take that misstep in some way. They give you the... Op you know, they give him the opportunity and then he pounces on them. And even here, it's a very conservative pool first. Mineral focused. Rallying drones to gas. And just two Zerglings to try and keep that Reaper at home. Now, if this was Clem, I don't think this would work. Because... Clem would probably still continue across the map. He'd follow the Lings with the SCV to make sure they can't sneak across, and his Reaper would still come in for the harassment. That's what Clem does really well. But Serral there, he splits the Lings off. Dodges the SCV. The SCV... Oh, I like the hiding on the high ground. But he doesn't actually see where it is in the Reaper. Yeah, stays at home. So Bunny's being a little bit more cautious with this Reaper. And Serral's just going to move out and take that high ground third. It's interesting. I always prefer the other third, but I think this tank position is just too dangerous, and that's why he doesn't want to risk tank there, potentially tanks there, tanks there. That bridge gets nasty. Bigger wide open spaces here. Then again, tanks down there can be pretty brutal as well, so definitely some things to watch out for. Uh, Creep Tumor has been delayed so far. Only built two Zerglings, but there we go. Creep Tumor is now down. And of course, you get those queens up just so very quickly with this build order. Link speed starting here. And behind it, a factory and a second gas. So Bunny's going to open up with a quick, uh, probably a quick Banshee usually, but definitely a Starport immediately here and straight into Hellion production. So not getting the fast third command center that's so common. You see Maru go for very regularly, Clem go for almost every game. Serral droning up very hard here. We've got more queens on the way. Creep Tumor is very well situated on the natural. Serral's going to put down another one there. Reaper hasn't got any damage just yet. That's usually the way it goes against a pool first. The Zerg has a little bit more control. Those two Lings are still just chilling. They didn't bother trying to run in. Though they maybe could have, since he knew the Reaper was on his side of the map for a little bit of that. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Marauder on the way, guys. Marauder on the way right now. Bunny is going Viking Marauder. He's going to do a medevac after that. Then Concussive Shells, he's going to get an Armory as well, and he's going to go for a Hellbat Marauder attack. It's a small map. This is Bunny's map pick. The last one was Serral's. Serral won his map pick. That is not surprising, right? It's a big map. It's not bad for Serral. I don't think it's the best for Zerg, but it is pretty decent. Now, Bunny on this small map, he's going to risk a very committed push, and that's a bit of a gamble. But on the other hand, we've seen Serral suffer. I think it was Hero Marine who took him out of that uh, EU Valencia Regionals with the uh the the three um the the three commands and into hellbat timing so maybe bunny is thinking about that um oh man the problem is this overlord it sees that there's no add-on on the starport you don't even need to see the barracks you already should know that this could be a liberator or a medevac and if it's a medevac well guess what i mean one of the dangerous things that the most respectful thing here that you have to worry about is the two Marauders with the Concussive picking up, boosting across this map. 6-8 Hellbats morphing and just Rooney. The most important thing here is the Baneling Nest is not that early. It's a decently timed Baneling Nest, but it's not going to be ready in time. So he needs to make sure his Queens pull back all get together. Oh my god, his Queens are on the edge of Crete. This is a huge mistake for Serral. You cannot have your Queens out on the edge of Crete like this. They're going to get tagged by these Marauders. The Medivac's a little slow to get in, but already look at that. Surrounds two of the Queens. This is a disaster. The other Queens are coming in, but they're a little bit late to the party. Nice transfusers on that left side, keeping these Queens alive a little bit longer, but the Medivac barely survives. 
The queen's trying to spread out. He's going after the medevac, but a great micro by Bunny. He's already taken out three queens. There are no banelings. They are morphing right now down here at the third base, but it's going to take them a while. These drones need to evacuate. Oh, no, some of them moving through the hellbats. And the marauders are continuing their advance into the main base. The queens need to shoot down this medevac. Cyril, you've got to target the medevac, buddy. But he still hasn't. That medevac is getting insane healing value. Two more banelings getting canceled before they can morph. Banelings waddling up from the third base, but the drones are already isolated here. Cyril losing more queens and more drones here. Banelings coming on in. They're going to get some decent hits, but oh my god, the Reaper grenade actually kind of massive there. Spreads his own units out with a friendly fire grenade. Oh, this is a disaster. Serral taking far too much damage here. The queen's trying to defend. It looks like finally, maybe with the Ling Rally, they can deal with it. But at the same time, Liberator comes in on that third base, gets a bunch of kills there. The drone's taking massive damage. The Viking hiding in the back. The Marauder there does go down finally. Several back to mining, but a bare natural, a third that's not able to mine right now, and a main only just getting back to it. 29 drones versus 44 SCVs. And I have to be critical of Serral because he scouted a very aggressive follow-up, a starport building a second non-add-on unit. Not a Banshee, not a battle cruiser. It had to be, uh, you know, I think he, he basically just assumed it was going to be Liberator Harass. And didn't play safe. He left those queens out in the middle of no man's land. In this scenario, you have to pull your queens together. And I know that's not optimal versus Liberator Harass, but Liberator Harass is going to deny a bit of mining time. It's not going to kill you. Whereas if they catch you with Hellbat timing, they get two or three queen kills straight away. Bam, it spirals very quickly. If those queens survive and group up, their transfusers are way more effective. Their damage output's way more effective. It's a very different situation. Baneling's going to go for a busty. But the Liberator and these Marines doing so well. Can he get a bunch of SCVs? Nope, they've already evacuated. And Serral's going to throw in the towel there. A huge mistake for Serral in this game. He got the information that he needed to. But he did not play respectfully of that. I think he was just like, no, nah, there's no way you'd just do a Hellbat timing on your map pick. This is a really good map for Terran. There's no reason why you'd, you'd risk something so aggressive. Perhaps a little bit dismissive there. But I got to say, the reason he knows this, you see a Viking... I mean, it's got to be a medevac, a medevac or a liberator. And you just have to play much safer against that. And you can see, of course, part of the reason this works is because Cyril knows there's a Viking, he wants to pull his overlords back to safety. But that means he doesn't get any early warning to pull his queens back. So that's part of why this build is engineered to have this Viking come around and really catch your opponent off guard. But to be so far out, this is exactly what got Serral killed when he was playing Hero Marine on 2000 Atmospheres in Valencia Regionals. He had his two his queens all the way on the edge of the creep and really far split apart. And that is a big mistake here. Very nice timing for Bunny though. And he does tie up the series. All right. Caught off guard there by an aggressive build order down here in the bottom left side. Serral representing NC Sports up against Envy's Bunny. And Bunny's going to go command center first. Oh my. Now the question is, does he go for just a big two base hammering push? If, if this was like inside out... I don't know about Waterfall. I know inside out, he'd definitely do it. Waterfall, maybe. Bunny's famous for his two base push uh, off command center first with Marine Tank. He, he's done this versus, um, versus Reyna. He destroyed Reyna in GSL, even when Reyna knew it was coming. He, he smashed him with it. So, so that can be very effective. He's going barracks, gas. We'll see, does he drop a second gas nice and early as well? Yeah, it looks like he does. So he wants to go up that tech tree quite fast. Now, Serral, on this map, it's going to be interesting to see how he defends and, and how he adapts, if at all, to the command center first. He's going hatchery first, not pool first this time. Interestingly, Bunny's going to SCV scout. I wonder why. Does it require a change in his build? I guess he's just worried about pool first and six or eight Zerglings coming here. We'll see what happens. But usually I see people play blind with the command center first just to get as many minerals as they can. What's so cool about this build is you might be like, oh, you're supply booked on 23. That's really bad. But it's like, no, 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 because you're making the orbital. You're making the marine. So nothing's actually being stopped from building. And then this finishes. And this is effectively two depots. And then as soon as you get 150 minerals, you go for a second orbital here. doop de doop There we go. And he scouts the hatchery first. So he says, okay, all, all is good. All is good. All is car. Third base in the top is... Uh, it's going to go up there as well. Serral has no idea this is a command center first just yet. He should be realizing about now that it's like, hey, how come there's no Reaper here? But it might just be a barracks uh, marine first build order. 
So he's not going to know until he gets over there with the Zergling. And even that might be too late for him to confirm exactly what's happened. Reactor going down for the factory swap so we can get into Hellion play. And looks like a pretty solid opening so far for Bunny. Serral's fully pulled off gas. He's got the Ling speed on the way. Third Queen is started. And he's spreading some Lings out. Looks like he's looking for proxies. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, okay. Ling comes up. He sees that the Marine is still on the reactor there. So very good scout for Serral. Probably knows from the command center and so many SCVs on it that it is actually a CC first as well. You don't really want to change anything here, Cyril. You just want to be a little bit more wary of the fact that, okay, he's got a bit of an economic boost. Any attack he does might hit just a little bit harder. Have a few more units in it. Hellion comes out, gets that kill, and the factory swap has now completed. Overlord on the top side ready for a sacrifice, but no way you're going to see much. That's just too far, too deep into the base. Hellion poking around. Creep spread is out. We've got one, two... Wait, did you get a creep tumor? No, there we go. Three creep tumors are active on the south side. No active tumor in the main. And a third command center goes down. Okay, so Bunny's doing a, Heli a CC first Hellion Banshee build with a third command center. It's not as crazy quick as fast three CC builds, but because you've got your natural up so fast, it's still super economic. This is a beautiful build order for him, and Serral's going to have to make sure he keeps holding that drone key down. He's building four more lings right now, which means he's playing like he's worried about Hellions diving. He's going up to 11 Zerglings versus a guy who's only got two Hellions, and he's not even building Hellions right now. He's at three, yeah, three Hellions, no Hellion production. And he's just going for, like, Stim and Marines and that sort of stuff, so... Oh, Bunny! What are we doing? Oh my god, Bunny panics! Pulls off gas, pulls off minerals... Fakes an armory, trying to mind game Serral. Does Serral fall for it? That was some of the most blatant stuff I've ever seen. Let's watch Serral's camera. He's building a spore, a lair. I think Bunny's like, hey, I just killed him with a Hellbat timing. Let's make him worry about another Hellbat timing. But he's already seen the third command center. Serral's normal build order is completely rock solid against a 3cc version of this. Not to mention, he's already seen Cloak on the starport. So this is a really silly move. And I think Bunny here, he gets a game under his belt and now he's playing overly fancy. And I got to worry that he's overthinking things a little bit. I don't think Serral's going to be affected by that. Now, on the other hand, Serral is building spores in each base uh, a little bit earlier than he needs them because you'll notice that the Banshee hasn't even moved across the map. Yes, technically Cloak is ready and the Banshee could be arriving soon. But Serral's work account just doesn't feel that great, right? He's lost a few drone, a few lings and Overlord. He's going to go for a fourth base up the very north side of the map, which means he really needs to make sure this creep spreads down there as fast as possible. So I think that tumor should reach there. I'm not sure, actually. He might have to spread his tumor here and here, because I don't think this reached the low ground just yet. Banshee's coming forwards through the middle of the map right now. Double Evo Chamber is on the way for Serral. He's on 61 drones now, so as much as I was criticizing his economy there, I felt like he was a bit slow to drone up his third. It's now completely full of minerals, and that is fantastic. Is there an Overseer up here? No, the Overseer's down in the natural. Oh, nice catch here by Bunny. Gets a high energy queen. If he gets another one, that would be massive. The other queens aren't there. Two queens go down. Lings are just going to go for the surround and the Hellions, though, which is a very good punish. I like that move by Serral. Says, hey, might as well take these bad boys out. Bunny's micro is very calm. Very good micro. Banshees are going to try and take out a few more Zerglings there. Queens will push that back. I mean, two queens, not the end of the world. He still has seven of them. Builds one extra queen to replace it. So it costs him 150 minerals effectively and lowers his queen count just a little bit. Oh, but one of the Banshees goes down. That's really good for Serral. He's got Burrow on the way. 1-1 one, one upgrades. Baneling speed, 66 drones right now. He's going to start building a handful more. Three more drones are on the way. Meanwhile, it looks like a Zergling runs in. Sees that third is well saturated. And it is Marines, Tanks, 1-1 one, one upgrade's about to be done. Where's the armory? Remember, he did not build the armory. He faked the armory earlier in this game. Which means he can't start 2-2 on time. And he doesn't show... Are we going second factory? Okay, second factory, which tells us that Bunny wants to play a macro game. So we expect a fourth command center to go down out here or here very soon. Armory starts up in the back of the main. Uh, not, not as fast as I'd like it as a Bunny fan, but... Definitely interesting. We just saw Serral glance at the very bottom right of the map for some reason. And now he's glancing over here. Ah, he's burrowing Zerglings everywhere. Okay, he's trying to burrow Zerglings on all these bases. Very good move there. We saw how annoying that was in the last game. Ooh, queens, queens, queens. Oh my god, another three queens. Four queens going down. Okay, Serral just needs to be really chill. He needs to back off. He can't chase into this. Oh my god, Serral pulling the trigger uh, in panic. I don't know what he's doing. This is a disaster of an engagement. 
There is no reason why he should have chased that. He got absolutely triggered. That was that was not a calm, measured decision. That was Serral got so surprised. He thought he had full map vision. He had no idea where that army came from, and he just lost his cool. It, losing the queens was bad, but chasing up the ramp afterwards into an unknown position was appallingly bad. Bunny here gets across the map without getting spotted. And, and basically, Serral just shits the bed with some explosive, explosive diary. That was not a good situation to attack like that. He could absolutely have played this game out. He, you know, he's on 79 workers. He can just transfer the drones. if he, he could do a bit of back and forth micro to hold on, pull some extra queens to the north. He could have done okay there. But he fought just before his 1-1 upgrades were done against the 1-1 of Bunny into a pre-spread two tanks in it, like no flank, nothing. Just, it was, his Banelings were behind his Zerglings as well because he'd A-moved from so far away. That was a disaster of an engagement. And I think, honestly, last game, he is tilted by... Because, remember, Serral saw everything he needed to know and he just disrespected the option of it being a Hellbat push. And he got punished for it. And I'll tell you, that makes Serral angry. I think Serral is, is basically in his own head right now saying, what an idiot, why is he gambling on this you know, this silly strategy in that pass game. Now he's distracted by that and he's making completely unforced errors. I mean, Bunny's basically just poking into his territory and Serral making some big mistakes. He's now playing very well. You can see he's, he's got his unit split. He's managed to defend his four bases, but he's definitely on the back foot. There's a big supply lead, big supply block as well for Serral right now. He's got a thousand minerals. If he could just spend that minerals, he might be okay, but he's going to go for a Ling run by think it's a little bit too last ditch, this Ling run by. Maybe it's going to be a flank on the tanks up here. He's going to run forward with his Lings and Banes, gets a tank, gets a Widow Mine. Great pullback. See, that's what you need to kill the tank that's up front and then just pull back. No reason to overextend there. He's got some Lings ready to come in from behind without Banelings there as well. Looks like he's going to burrow those Zergings and look for a fancy flank. The Spores in the main shoot down a Medivac. Great move by Serral here. Yes, he'll lose a Queen, but he's got a Hive on the way. If he can just spend those Minerals, but he doesn't have any Lava right now. And losing so many queens is making it especially hard for him to spend that money. The queen... Oh, man. Okay, the Banelings are finally going to get rid of this, as will those queens. But on the top side at the same time, it looks like that push did get cleaned up. Link Bane numbers are starting to gather forwards. But as the Widow Mines come in, that can cause you problems. Three Banelings do take out two of the Widow Mines. The third one barely survives there. A few more Lings and Banes are going to be needed to roll into this. Serral needs to just keep rolling in handfuls of Lings and Banes. Oh, very nice move by Serral. Really good spready there. Oh, not so good. Not so good spreadies. Does take a couple of big hits there. The first one, much bigger than the second, but still very good trades for Bunny. Serral needs to trade super efficiently, but Bunny's got so much momentum on him, such army advantages. Serral's in a very tough position. He's trying to just catch back up. He's making Vipers, 2-2 two, two upgrades, Adrenal Glands, but right now it's just the sheer numbers of Biomine that are causing him troubles, and I feel like he needs to go for a Lurker Den. I think for him, he feels like he's too far behind, but hey! Burrowed Banelings finally coming in, taking out a bunch of Marines there. That's a nice little value move. Oh, Bunny looked like he was going to move south, and he does. But he avoids those Banelings. He's also very Marauder heavy now, which means his army is just not as vulnerable to these Burrowed Banelings. Ling Bane coming on in. Watch out for these Banelings. Oh, the Widow Mine! Another big Widow Mine and a hot pickup. Bunny is getting immaculate trades. He's at 2 to 1 cost efficiency compared to game 1. The efficiency is completely different in this game. We've got a fifth command center down in the bottom. Plus three attack is on the way as well. He's up to that eight barracks. Just non-stop parade of bio mine. Bunny's got Serral where he wants him. And he says it's time to trade, trade, trade all day. Gets hatchery to half-life. Saves the units. Pulls them back. Army in the north coming in again. He's going to try and bait these lings into the Widow Mine hits. Let's see if Serral can get some good fights. He needs them. He desperately, desperately needs them right now. But oh man, these Widow Mines just keep getting hits. And Bunny always saving his units from the Baneling connections here. Marauders running on forward here. He's going to try and bait these Banelings into a bit of a fight. Good spready on the Marines here. The Banelings are still going to reduce the damage output of this army, though. And so many more units are coming. Oh, no! Serral missed a big opportunity there. We're going to try and keep those Banelings on screen a little bit, just so we can see if they do go off. If he can force Bunny to retreat, he might take a big Baneling hit. But, oh, does set that off, but only gets about four or five Marines there. And you can see the Liberator. There's no answer. There's so many Marauders up front. Serral cannot tear down this front line. This front line of Marauder Medivac, he doesn't have the numbers to deal with it. There's just so much here from the Terran. The Queens are coming south, but the Hatchery's already fallen. The Vipers are out somewhere on this map. I think they're back home gathering energy. Indeed, they are. Meanwhile, a fifth base is established with a Planetary getting up on it. Bunny is all over Serral right now in this series. And honestly, it's just clean, 
clean, straightforward play. Super consistent, super solid micro, great spreadies. His Liberator Parade, he did not give Serral any room to breathe, any time to get back in this game. Bunny has just kept his foot on the pedal, and all it takes is one mistake against a guy like Bunny, and he's going to carry that one to victory. Very well played. All right, well, he's only one game away from taking out the world champion. We've got Bunny in the top right side of the map, representing NV Esports, up against Serral in the bottom left side, representing Ents. He's going to go for that hatchery first. Here is Serral, and i got to say, you're back on Bunny's map pick. The last one of Bunny's maps, he went for the Hellbat timing. This time around, he's going to go for the Command Center first. And I talked about earlier how Command Center first is almost certainly going to lead to a two-base Marine tank push on this map because it is so good for Marine Tank. If you're playing Pion, you're playing Bunny. Even Maru, I'm pretty sure, has done the two-base Marine Tank a few games, and that's not really his style. It's it's so expected. And you know what? I think Serral expects it as well. He's, I mean, I, 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 even without seeing this Command Center first, I, I think he would probably expect it, because this is what he did versus Reyna, and he looked unstoppable doing it. It's what he's done versus so many players. And I think it's an amazing build, and there's part of me that says, hey, yeah, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's another part of me that says, if Serral knows it's coming, Serral should be able to slap this down. And Serral historically dominates Terrans on their map picks. So back in uh, Submarine, really short rush distance map, dominated Terrans on it. Uh, uh, Beckett dominated Terrans on it. Serral's weird thing usually is that he'll lose more often on the Zerg map in ZVT. Like that last one, Tropical Sacrifice, right? And, and that is, of course, a huge bummer to lose his map pick. That's 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 why he finds himself in this position now. But he's actually... I wouldn't count him out yet because he's got such a good history of smashing the Terrans in the next situation uh, on these small maps and then forcing the game five, which should probably be on... <clears throat> I don't know, actually. I assume Serral Vito's Moondance, which means Stargazers might be the final map. So uh, forcing it to Stargazers, I think, I think that's a map which... It's not good for Zerg run buyers, but it's also really big, so it's hard for Terran to push. So it's a mixed bag. I think it's a map Serral could excel on. Now, Bunny, of course, the, the ball's in his court. You know Serral's going to play a defensive macro style, almost certainly. It's very rare we see him pull out a crazy Ravager Ling or anything. Who knows? Maybe it would work really, really well here. But it's not Serral's style. Nice little Ling harass here. Just delaying a bit of mining time here. And does manage to get the Zergling out as well. We've got the Starport there as well. Hellion's coming down. This is a double gas opening. Now on these smaller maps, you do tend to open double gas. Last time it was so we could do the Hellbats, right? The Hellbat Marauder. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's just Banshees this time around. Um, on the other hand, is Banshees... If you're going to do the two base push, do you bother with Banshees? I think you can go Hellion Banshee into a two-base push. You've just got to preserve those units. You can't afford to throw them away. Now, Serral here. I think he started OV speed accidentally, then queued up a queen. No, 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 he didn't. It was just a queen. I'm just seeing things. Uh, third base is finished for him. 34 drones versus 31 SCVs. Man, that work account's closer than I'm used to seeing it. But that is the command center first. That's its power, man. Banshee starts up. No cloak. And Hellions are being produced. These Hellions are going to veer around, looking to deny some creep tumors so far. No units being lost on either side. Both sides playing very economically. Hellion's hoping to catch a drone popping out, but it's just an Overlord. Serral's just going to escort these drones over from the natural and the main. Start to rally them all over there. Overlord's going to start to sacrifice in. Sees the factory still on the reactor here. And Bunny, it's time for him to drop a third command center right now. Or extra barracks. He has to make up his mind. He's going to hide it, I think. Is he going to hide it? This this will delay his barracks, which delays his stim, his production. Yeah, yeah, look at that. He's bringing SCVs to build the barracks. He's, he's waiting. The Zergling runs in. The Overlord runs in. At this point, you got to say, hey, it's 4 minutes 30. Why haven't you started a command center yet? Where's the third command center, buddy? What's going on? It technically could just be out of vision, but I think with the factory swapping off there and the timing, and he probably even saw the SCV pull over, I think Serral should be able to make the read. We'll see if he can figure it out. Lair is on the way. Baneling Nest. Spore Crawler in each base as well. But Cloak got cancelled, guys. It's just one Banshee. And he's actually swapped the Starport into an add-on builder now. Siege Tank. Stim. Five Barracks on the way. Bunny is 100% committed to the two-base push. The Hellions and the Banshee is going to go after these Queens. This would be a great way to start things off. But unable to get that kill. If Serral can keep this creep out here and push it even beyond that bridge, 
This will be such a good head start for defending the incoming push because the Terran always wants to siege their tanks over here. Potentially on this side of the bridge, they might put one down there as well. And that's really hard to break once they get sieged up there. But if you can just have your creep fire up front, you can fight him before he even gets there. And that's exactly what Cyril's doing. He's even moving a spore crawler forward. He's going to root that up off the creep as well. Super smart play by him. Now, Cyril, he's got one, two, three, four gas geysers. Does he have a fourth base? Yeah, fourth base. But if you want to defend this push and you know it's coming, you would stop right now, not build any more drones and nothing but Zerglings. And look at that. He's building Zerglings. So he's playing very safe. Baneling Nest and mass Zerglings on the way. No Evo chambers, no upgrades. Serral is just going to mass Lings, Banes, and Queens, and he has to shut down the first wave because unlike a player who's got double upgrades and 70 workers where it's just about survive and buying time, the way Reyna would play against this, Serral is preempting it. He's saying, I have enough units to smash this. Now, I think the best way to do it is to send all your Zerglings across the map, and when he moves out, backstab the natural and cut off the reinforce, and then you can use that as a flank, while the units you're building at home are morphing into Banelings, ready to ambush him if he pushes too deep on creep trying to punish you. I think it's a really good way for Serral to play this, if he can set that up. One of Serral's big problems historically against these sorts of pushes, and I think he died to one against Hero Marine as well, is that he likes to fight front on. And if he goes around the left side and sets up a proper flank from the left, to sandwich the marines, that can work really well. But if you don't sandwich the marines, Bunny has some of the sickest marine splits and micro you've ever seen. So Serral's got to be really careful. But look at that creep spread. Oh, Bunny's not going to be happy about that. Look how far that creep is. He's coming forward. Plus one and combat shields is going to finish in the next 10 seconds. 22 Banelings are morphing. Baneling speed's finished in seven seconds. Now Serral, he's going to go for the ambush. He's got his army split on the bottom and the right. He's got to jump on this. I'd like these units to move a bit further north. He's got to jump on this. Here we come. The medevacs boosting into the corner to siege the tank. Serral's got to go right now. He's waiting too long. Serral's letting him siege up, letting him pre-spread. Bunny with a beautiful setup here. The Marines trying to pull back. Banelings trying to cascade over this position. But that's the pullback I was talking about. That's why you need the sandwich. The tanks are going to go down. But so much Ling Bane falling. He gets the last tank. But oh my god, at what cost? Definitely need to turn around and shoot that Banshee down. Please finish that Banshee off, Serral. Otherwise, that guy's going to be very annoying in the future. But he loses a lot of Queens, a lot of Lings, a lot of Banes, and there's so much Marines left, and the tanks are in position. That's it. I think Bunny might have this. I mean, I know the numbers aren't there just yet, but I told you guys, Serral was so committed. This is not about buying time. With the way he cut his drones and he has no upgrades, he needed to crush that fight, and he did not crush that fight. The Units Lost tab tells us a story of 2-1 to one cost inefficiency. And that is, that is a problem. There we go. Great Ling run by. He catches the rally. Get up the ramp. Get up the ramp. Get up the ramp. Serral's not microing it. He lets Bunny back up into his natural, missing a golden opportunity to cause havoc. But Serral, ah, it's a half assed run by. He needed to do a much more serious run by than that. I think he needs to keep escalating. He needs to keep... You cannot let him rally to this position. This position is deadly. He, he just needs to refuse to fight here. Fall back. Fall back. He has taken a very bad fourth, though. He should have expanded to the bottom right side of this map. That's a much better fourth base to defend um, from this middle push. Whereas right now, Bunny's got a wedge between the economy of Serral, and that makes his life very difficult. Ling Bane setting up for a flank on the right. Ling's there. Once again, not enough Lings. Bunny is allowed to rally across this map. You cannot let him do this as Serral. Serral's making a ton more Banelings. He's going up to 35 Banelings, 80 plus Zerglings. He's setting up a lovely flank. Will it be enough? We're about to find out, everybody. Serral is about to pull the trigger on this. These tanks are in such a nasty corner, though. Bunny sees the flank, and he's going to stim on it. He's going to stim some Marines towards that flank. Spread out. Serral coming in from all sides. Banelings get a few good hits on the right side. One of the tanks falls. There's still two more tanks, and he's getting choked up. Serral's getting very choked up on that ramp. The tank splash. Oh, my God. Devastating. Attacking around a kill zone there. Appallingly bad for Serral. You cannot attack around a corner with any significant amount of your army. It just does not work. We, we see it once again. The unit's lost tab. Almost two to one efficiency. Bunny is just smashing face up 20 supply. He's got the plus one attack advantage versus the zero zero Ling Bane. And as I said, if you stop at 57 drones, no upgrades, it's all about absolutely dominating the first fights. But look at this, the run buys are so effective. Cutting off the rally is so effective. But it feels like Serral only does this after losing a frontal fight. I've talked about it for years. Serral's greatest strength is that he is so good defensively front on. He likes to lock horns like an angry mountain goat with his opponent and just friggin bash their skull in. And it works a lot of the time, but against a push like this, which you knew about minutes ahead of time, it's so much better to cut off the rally 
to, to go around behind, to smash the wall. You cannot let them reinforce this position. And he's let him reinforce it far too well. The tank goes down, but there's no answer to the libs. The queens are getting gunned down by those. He does actually take out a lot of the marines, but oh, there's no. A lot of them were in the medevacs. Pick it up to dodge the banelings. They re-unload, and that's going to be that. cyril has got nothing left. Bunny coming in here. And an absolutely beautiful, beautiful victory. This is such a nice win for Bunny. Three to one over the world champion. God game of Bunny goes to the grand finals.